Luke chapter 5, starting in verse 12, it says, In one of the villages, Jesus met a man with an advanced case of leprosy. When the man saw Jesus, he bowed with his face to the ground, begging to be healed. I'm just going to stop right there for a minute. This man had an advanced case of leprosy. Wow. Covered. Body is covered with leprosy. And, you know, it wasn't a good thing for somebody to have leprosy back then because they were, they were considered to be an outcast, you know, a castaway to society. They could not go in and out, you know, amongst people because people were in fear of getting leprosy because there was no cure for leprosy at all. And so they were an outcast. Can you imagine this guy? He just doesn't have leprosy. He has an, an advanced case of leprosy. Contagious. So he's an outcast. Can you imagine how this guy must have felt every day of his life? The, the things going on in his mind. Maybe, you know, anxiety. Maybe fear. Maybe just depressed. You know, feeling overwhelmed. Discouraged. Because he couldn't do what everybody else was doing. You know, the priest would keep and monitor the people that had leprosy. They wouldn't let them go in to mingle with everyone else. So they were in a place of bondage. Bondage. Stricken with leprosy, a disease. Contagious. So can you just, can you just picture this man and how he must have felt? But here's the thing that I want to just pull out of here is that he did not stay in that place of leprosy. He took action. He could have just sat and just, you know, well, this is my life. You know, I have leprosy, so this is just how it's going to be the rest of my life. So I might as well just accept it. I might as well just come to grips with it. He could have just done that. But he chose to go after the one that could do something about it. He chose to get up and take action when he heard faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And he heard faith because he knew that Jesus was nearby. So let's continue to read. When the man saw Jesus, he bowed with his face to the ground. And he begged Jesus to be healed. Do you see this man? Not only does he hear faith, but he took action. He believed that, if, that Jesus was more than able to heal him. Isn't that something? Faith motivated him to go after Jesus. And you see this beautiful example of humility. He bowed his head to Jesus. Another translation said he fell down in front of Jesus. And he's begging him to be healed. So you see this humility. He humbled himself. In full humility before Jesus. The source. The one that could do something about his problem. His disease. So he's begging Jesus. To be healed. And the Lord said to this man, Jesus, that he was willing to heal him. Isn't that something? Jesus was willing. So let's just read a little bit more. And that if you are willing, you can heal me and make me clean. If you are willing, you can heal me and make me whole. That's what he said. Then Jesus reached out and touched him. Touched a man who was contagious. Touched a man who had a disease that people were afraid of. But Jesus wasn't afraid. Jesus reached out and he touched this man, physically touched him. And that word touch here in the Greek, it means 
to attach. A connection took place. Jesus physically touched him. So there was this, this, this connection. The word was right there. The word of God touched this man. And the verb for that word touched is to set on fire. Isn't that something? So not only did Jesus touch this man in his situation, but he set him on fire. This man was made clean. Jesus said, I am willing. Be healed. That's simple. It's that simple. Why do we complicate things? God just wants us to have faith, to believe on him. He's a God that can do the impossible. Yes. See, what we think is impossible, God, God can turn that whole thing around and make it a possibility. He said all things are possible to them that believe. It's that simple. It's faith. 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 When we have faith, we should be motivated to go to the Father. To make our petitions known and not to be afraid or ashamed to do it. God is an ever-present help in the time of trouble. And he wants us to approach him, the throne of grace. To find mercy, grace, and help in the time of need. Isn't that something? So here this man, this man filled with leprosy, is in physical contact with the word of God. Standing in the presence of Jesus. Isn't that amazing? Hallelujah. And he wasn't ashamed to go to the Lord and ask him for healing. So Jesus touched him, reached out, touched him, connected. They made contact. And he set him on fire. Hallelujah. Just a powerful word. Let's continue to read. And instantly... The leprosy disappeared. That's what happens when the word of God shows up. When the word of God is spoken into our lives and we, we take heed to the word. Things that we were suffering, things that we were battling, things that we were being subjected to. All of a sudden has got to go away. Because the word of God is a word that's filled with authority. And we have the authority. We have his word in us today. Just fast forward to the new covenant. We have his word in us, living in us, abiding in us. It's in him that we live, move, and have our being. We have the authority of God living in us. And we need to act like we have the, the authority of God by demonstrating it through our submission. We speak it. We live it. We demonstrate it. We manifest it. We allow the spirit and the life of God to flow in us and out of us. This should be a common thing. This should be an everyday occurrence. And that's what God's calling us to. An everyday occurrence to manifest his glory. An everyday occurrence to let the river of life, freedom, healing, deliverance, miracles, signs and wonders to flow from our lives. That when we speak, we're not speaking our own words. Like Paul said in in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, Paul said, I'm not coming to you with enticing words of, of, of my wisdom. I'm not coming to you based upon what my knowledge, based upon what I know. I'm coming to you based upon the spirit of Christ so that I can demonstrate the glory and manifest God. I'm not coming to you based upon my knowledge. I'm coming to you with a demonstration of the spirit and the power of God. So that your faith doesn't rest on me. But your faith is going to rest on the king of kings and the Lord of lords. Your faith is going to rest on Jesus. That was Paul's focus and that should be ours. Pointing people to the Lord. Manifesting Christ. Letting the river flow. We have authority living in us today. So this man. Filled with leprosy, begged Jesus for healing. Jesus reached out and touched him, made contact, set him on fire. Hallelujah. This man was made whole. It says, and instantly the leprosy disappeared. 
Instantly, suddenly, the leprosy disappeared. It didn't linger. It didn't happen the next day. It instantly disappeared. Then Jesus instructed him not to tell anyone what had happened. He said, go to the priest and let him examine you. Take along the offering required in the law of Moses for those who have been healed of leprosy. This will be a public testimony that you have been cleansed. My word cleansed you. My word, Jesus is saying, touched your body and I drove out that spirit of infirmity, that leprosy. His word set a fire in him, driving out all manner of sickness and disease. That's power. And that's the power that God wants us to walk in. That's the power, and that power is lacking in a lot of places today. In a lot of churches today, people just, they just don't believe. They say they believe. But really, it's like, I don't know, fear grips their mind. For his life, you have your power living in me to speak your word and to see a miracle take place. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. God wants us to shine forth his life, shine forth his word, shine forth his anointing from our lives. It's not anything about us, but we need to manifest Christ. God is a spirit and he needs a body to dwell in. He needs a body to take up residency in, and that's us. His church, his bride. We are the bride. And we have been equipped with supernatural power that only can come from God to go out and make a difference wherever we go. Not for our glory, but for the glory of God. That should be our focus to walk in humility before the Lord and allow his word to touch and penetrate through somebody's heart so that they can have an encounter of God for, their, for, their, for themselves. People need to have an encounter of God. They need to see Christ move in their lives. But we can pray and we can ask God to bless and we can ask God to move in their lives. But we also need to be speaking. We also need to be demonstrating and manifesting the spirit of Christ. We all are anointed of God, all of us. Every believer has the anointing of God living in them. We are all ministers of reconciliation. We are all out there in the faith. And we should be demonstrating the man and manifesting Christ. We don't just come into a building or come into a church building and sit and go home and do nothing. But a lot of people do. They come into a church, they go through the motions. They hear the message, they get their nuggets, they close their Bible, and they go on with their life. Selfish. Full of self, full of pride. God wants us to be servants to everybody we come in contact with. Servants. There's no big eyes or little U's in the kingdom of God. We are all servants. Jesus made himself of no reputation, but took upon himself the form of a servant and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. That word servant means a slave. See, we are to be a slave, not to sin, but to righteousness and holiness. Fully yielded and submitted slaves to God so that he can manifest through us. That's what it's about. It's not about us, but a lot of selfish people in the kingdom of God right now, in the church, is in it for themselves. What they can get, that's selfish. We should all be slaves serving. Jesus was a servant. He didn't go around concerned about making friends. He made himself of no reputation. He was hated. He was despised, rejected. But he was still a servant. Even though he was rejected and hated, he was still a servant to the enemies. 
He blessed the enemies. We're supposed to bless our enemies, pray for those who despitefully use us and say all manner of evil against us falsely for his name's sake. We are still to be a blessing and a servant to those people, enemies of the cross. And I know the flesh doesn't want to do that sometimes. We want to retaliate. We want to say, give somebody a piece of our mind, especially when they've done us wrong. But we need to, you know what? Sometimes the order of the day is to just stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Continue to pray. Continue to bless and intercede for your enemies. See, that's a servant. And God has called us to be a servant. God has called us to go out and be carriers of his word. Carriers. We are carriers of God's presence. Of God's anointing. We are carriers of God's anointing. What does that mean? We carry something. That means when you carry something, you're going to give it. You're going to give it out. It's not for you to just hoard. God did not put his spirit, his kingdom, his life, his word, his presence in us for ourselves. It's for everyone else that we come in contact with. That's how people are going to wake up. That's how people are going to come into the truth. That's how people are going to have a clear perception of who God is. Through your humility and full submission. To allow Christ to rule and reign, to be supreme. We're carriers of God's anointing. So we need to demonstrate, we need to manifest Christ. So that his word can touch broken hearts, lives. People that are filled with anxieties and fears. People that don't know what to do. People who are contemplating suicide. We have no idea. People are hurting all over the place. And we are carriers of God's anointing. We need to give out his presence, his anointing, his word, his life to people. So that they can be touched, healed, cleansed, made free. By the word of God, the word that dwells in every believer. So when Jesus was walking the face of the earth, God manifested in the flesh. He's standing there before this man filled with leprosy. And he reached out and he touched this man. He made a contact with this man. He attached himself to this man. And now guess what? I already talked about the new covenant. But God has attached himself with us because he's in us. There's that connection. His spirit is attached to us, right? He's living in us. And we have that fire, just like he demonstrated here in the word. When he touched this man, there was an attachment that took place. And he set this man on fire. We have the fire of God in us today. To speak a word in due season, right? That fire is going to burn away, draws, it's going to purify the word that's in us. The word of God is fire. It's power. It's the spirit. It's wind. It's the word of God, right? It's filled with miracles. And we are carriers of God's anointing. We need to go out and make a connection with people. That when we speak, we're not speaking our words, but it's the word of God that's that's, that's getting a hold, that's pricking their hearts. What's going on? His word, his grace is attaching itself to people. People are going to respond. People are going to wake up. And then the word is going to set them on fire. People are going to get hungry and passionate for God. Manifesting his kingdom and his, and his glory... We should expect to see lives changed. Miracles. So when you speak God's word, let his word grab a hold of somebody's mind. Their perception. So they wake up. And they get on fire for God. Passionate for God. God is upon me. Upon me. Do you believe that? The spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Not just on me, but in me. Because again, we're in the new covenant. Because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the vengeance and the day of vengeance of our God, 
to comfort all who mourn. All who mourn. To console those who mourn in Zion. To give them beauty for ashes. The oil of joy for mourning. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. That they may be called trees of righteousness. The planting of the Lord. That he may be glorified. So the spirit of the Lord is in us. So that we can go out and preach the good news of the gospel. So that we can set the captives free to heal the sick and the brokenhearted. Those that are in prison, prison in their mind. With fear, stricken with torment and fear and paranoia. We have the ability through the power of Christ to speak a word that sets the captives free. We're carriers of the anointing. That's the word of the Lord tonight. Carriers of the anointing. 